Uh, we just had the spring equinox this week on Monday, I believe it was. Beginning of new life in uh, uh, Native American uh, calendar. It is the new year. It is the beginning. So we are going to start with a song called Center of Creation. I am a seed. The first verse is I am a seed planted in stillness. I am the center of creation, fertile ground for the highest thoughts of God. And uh, the next verse is about I'm a tree rooted in fullness. The last verse is I am complete, living in wholeness. All right, so it goes like this. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Steve Van Meter, your seniorist of ministers. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm a senior. It means I'm a senior of the ministers here. Now, I'm the only minister here, but we're anticipating other ministers, right? It's always going to be help coming around. Anyway, we're so grateful that you have found this as your spiritual destination this morning. We've been expecting you. Thank you for not disappointing us. And we're going to start with what we start every Sunday morning, and that's reading our mission vision statement, which says, We are open, loving, spiritual community, dedicated to evolving consciousness through the teaching of spiritual principles. You guys should have this down by now. You shouldn't even have to put it up on the screen. You know, it took me, you know, six years to, to memorize it. Um, we are going to, at this point, have some announcements. So, um, I don't know if you guys got here early and saw the, the iMovie. Um, we're continuing to show that iMovie for the people that didn't get to see it last week. But uh, a, a special thank you to Chris Strong, who created that iMovie. To everyone who, who has over the years supported this center, I mean, even just one person coming one time is supporting our center um, because who knows whose lives we've changed. And we are um, so grateful to have had 45 years in this building and we're actually celebrating 50 years in this community. So it's a huge, a huge uh, milestone for any center to do that, to keep it together long enough. You know, it's kind of like a band, you know? I mean, how many bands have lasted 45 years? I mean, you probably count them on one hand, you know? Stones. Well, I won't get into that, okay. <laughs> Our pledge drive continues. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone for coming forward with your um, pledges. Uh, we are currently uh, at fifty-six thousand three hundred and seventeen dollars in pledges. Our goal is eighty thousand dollars. That's our operating expense uh, for the year. Which, as Nancy, you know, we're not far off from what it was several, you know. 40 years ago. So uh, things have gone up and down and still we're, we're doing great. So uh, keep those pledges coming in. Um, our event team will meet today at 1145 right here in the sanctuary. So if you're interested in knowing what's going on or wanting to help with what's going on or be a team leader for what's going on here, we would love to have your energy be part of our energy because there's only one of us here. God, expressing is the many events that we have in our life. And um, the more events that we can have together, the more together we feel, right? Don't you love our community? Isn't this yeah. great? We are so blessed. And we're taking full advantage of it. Um, changes to our payment platform. We are switching over from Vanco to Square, the Square Reader. It's gonna be more advantageous for us to do our accounting. Um, so we're in the process of switching that over. We see this as a seamless thing, although it's taken me the last three weeks to figure it out. But <laughs> it's gonna be seamless for you. That's why I'm putting all this work into it. And thank you to Cindy for assisting me with that. Save the date. Our annual community fun fair is happening Saturday, June 24th from 10 to 4 p.m. We'll have youth activities, barbecue, music, local vendors, presentations, and healing services. Fun fair vendor and presentation applications are available on the back counter as well as uh, on email from Wendy Orsat, and I think we're trying to actually get those things up on our website so you can print those out if you want to look, uh, drill down and find where those are on the website. Please contact Wendy if you have any questions. We're encouraging our members and congregants 
to apply first before opening it up to the broader community. What that means is that we want to be sure that if there's anybody in our community that that sells something or has a service or wants a booth that they can get the first dibs on the booth. So we promote from within. And after that's open for a little while, then we'll open it to the outside vendors. So if you're interested in that, if you have a service or a product to sell and want to be part of our fun fair, check out the um, information on the back counter. New member orientation, Sunday, April 2nd. If you are a new member, or an existing member who would like a refresher uh, in to join us in this new member orientation. We will have copies of our bylaws available along with members' responsibilities and privileges, and uh, we'll be available to answer any questions. There is a sign-up sheet in the back because I'd like to know how many copies of the bylaws and information that we'll have um, for everybody. And then the next Sunday after that is Easter Sunday. Seems pretty quick, isn't it? Easter came early this year, or my mind think it does, <laughs> thought it does. Uh, Sunday, April 9th is our Easter Sunday new member uh, celebration and potluck. Um, join us in celebrating all of our um, new things with fun food and fellowship. We would like to, if you'd like to bring a salad or scalped potatoes, uh, please let us know by signing up on the sheet in the back counter and let us know what you're going to bring for the potluck. Also, we are encouraging you to wear your finest Easter bonnet, bow tie, hat, or finery, whatever that means to you. You know, we're going to have a little fun with the, you know, if you want to wear bunny ears or whatever you'd like, we're going to have some fun with this. Um, let's see. There's a new class. Uh, Paula Peterson, one of our practitioners, is um, having a class that uh, starts April 14th. Uh, are you curious about the philosophy and teachings of Ernest Holmes? Would you like to learn more about the evolution of science and mind? Ernest Holmes would not want you to hang on his every word. Instead, use the words as a foundation from which to build your own future, one belief at a time. It's called the Essential Ernest Holmes, and it is a 10-week class. It starts by Friday, February 14th at 2 p.m., goes till 5. February. About April. April. Did I say April? February. 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 <laughs> Where did that come from? Oh, you know, that's my dyslexia kicking in. I saw Friday and I said February or something. The cost is $200 total. Uh, that's 145 for the class, 45 for your certificate, and $10 for your material fee, which equals the uh, 200. You will be responsible for. I think there's a book that goes with it called The Essential Ernest Holmes, um, and I think we have some available in the library or get them where you get your book sales. Metaphysical book study continues Sunday mornings from 9 to 9:45 in the conference room. And uh, the book that we're studying is Living the Science of Mind. Our meditation group is going strong over at the LEC from 9.50 to 10.05. Um, and that's run by our practitioners. Did I miss anything, Presty? Okay. Sometimes she's, <laughs> she helps me to keep my mind square or round or whatever. So um, please stand as Lauren leads us as we sing, We Are One. Thank you.
one of the practitioners here, and it's my joy to be here. Let's read the gratitude together. I am so grateful to love myself with all of my qualities and all of my faults, and so it is. Happy spring. Let's affirm it. <laughs> Happy spring. <laughs> I know it's coming. <laughs> so we got a little sneak peek of it, and then at my house, we get a lot of snow, so <laughs> crazy. Yeah. But uh, you know, the thing is, is that the snow and the rain is good for drenching the ground. So maybe we won't have the smoke and the wildfires later in the summer. <laughs> So I wanted to tell you a little bit about what practitioners do at this center for those who are not familiar. Practitioners are the healing arm of our center. Our main job is to pray with and for you. To fill out a prayer request, use the yellow form in the seat backs in front of you. And if you are online, you can also submit a prayer request on our website at grantspasscsl.org. We're dedicated to your confidentiality and healing. We have taken several years of science of mind classes to become licensed practitioners. We also teach classes and workshops here at our center. If you're in need of prayer, please contact one of us for a short affirmative prayer after our service. Today, I think it's Bucky and I. Is that true, Bucky? Yeah, that are available. Um, or contact one of us individually for a professional power pack practitioner session. <laughs> um, our phone numbers are in your program and online. Whether you have an issue to resolve or just want to experience more good in your life, we are here for you. Use us. Today, our table practitioner is Becky Dennerlin. She's holding the high watch for us and can direct, direct you to a practitioner for prayer after the service. And the flower, the beautiful spring flowers are from Priscilla. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Is anyone here for the very first time? If so, please raise your hand and we have a welcome packet. No? You know, that's really a good thing because that means the people that are here keep coming back. <laughs> okay. So let's, oh, it's time to silence your cell phones if you haven't already. And then we're going to read the prayer on the screen together. I open up and accept my worthiness, loving myself completely, knowing I'm an integral part of the divine whole. We are all works in progress, and I honor my as I have done the best of myself. And so it is. <clears throat> Stay seated and we'll sing I Am Loved together. <laughs> together and I have a reading from 
just about my favorite book in the world, as most of you know, <laughs> 365 Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. So we'll listen to this and then we'll go into meditation thinking of our wholeness, which is what we talked about. I experience complete wholeness. I know that I am some part of the divine being, that the power and presence of that spirit is in the world word I speak, and that word infinitely and perfectly and permanently makes whole. I know that I represent an individualization of the truth, the truth of wholeness, the truth of love, reason and sound mind, the truth of peace and joy, the truth and the freedom of the circulation of the divine in every atom, in every function, in every organ. I empty myself of any and every thought that denies this. I know that silently but effectively, that divine power of the invisible spirit is working here and now, in this moment. I take hold of this realization with complete certainty. I recognize that I am a perfect being, living under perfect conditions, knowing that good alone is real. I also know that good alone is the only thing that has any power either to act or to react. Everything that I do, say, or think today will be done, said, or thought from the spiritual viewpoint of God in everything. My recognition of, recognition of the power is sufficient to neutralize every false experience, make the crooked straight and the rough places smooth. Definitely, I know that this recognition establishes the law of harmony in my experience, the law of prosperity, the sense of happiness and health. I experience complete wholeness. So let's go into the silence and I'll tell you when it's time to come out. Go ahead and come back to your seat and open your eyes when you're ready. And I'm just affirming complete wholeness, complete harmony, complete peace, complete love for the Screens Path Center for Spiritual Living and every person here and on Zoom. I know that this time together is a blessing and that we are all filled with love and joy. Thank you, God. And so it is. So it's time for Lauren's beautiful music and then a message from Reverend Stephen. Thank you. And I would like to invite Gish up to sing. He um, was, um, he was, um, remember? Uh, what, what's that? The member of the choir. Well, that's right. I put it together. He and I sing in choir down in Ashland. And then I saw him here and I heard his voice. I you have to be looking to have to have you here. So he chose this song. And what I'd like to say about it is um, it's the song Hallelujah. And from being in Center for Spiritual Living, it, this song has taken on uh, another whole other meaning. Um, it's easy to sing Hallelujah when everything's great. And, and uh, yet this goes to the dark night of the soul where you, when you meet with God, because God is there, that's the hallelujah that comes from that is one of the deepest you'll ever know. Um, and so in this time in Christendom that we're celebrating Lent, God's no better. Now, although in the in church I grew up in, we didn't say hallelujah during Lent. I don't know if you know that, but they omitted the hallelujahs out of the liturgy. And then on Easter, everybody sings hallelujah. <laughs> Um, so I'm kind of going against my roots here to be saying <laughs> hallelujah during Lent, but this is the deep, the deep hallelujah that comes from 
that uh, that dark night of the soul. That when you when and God is there, and when you meet that, and as you all know, that is uh, something that changes us forever. So. setting that up for us. It's great to have surprises, isn't it? Yeah. As long as they're good surprises. <laughs> they're all good. In one way or the other, you got me there. You got me. So this is our last installment of um, our authenticity talks. And um, we're going to cover some stuff today that might be a little bit tender. But, you know, if we only talk 
um, if we don't address the things in our life that sometimes are challenging to us, um, then we don't really make any movement forward. So um, this may be self-revealing, but I think that if you uh, listen closely, you might find a place where you fit in uh, because of your challenges rather than uh, wrestling against them. So creating authenticity, no approval needed. You know, if somebody writes you a pink slip somewhere, write yourself a green slip. <laughs> they aren't the boss of you. They're just directing you to your highest and best good. You know, um, as my teacher would say, uh, your good is elsewhere. Go there quickly. <laughs> Everyone blesses us. Some coming into our life and some leaving. When we embrace our own worthiness, we will stop seeking approval from others. As children of the divine, we are fundamentally worthy. You know, it's said that you're born a sinner. Well, what did I do? <laughs> I, 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 if you believe in sin, you might want to review that. Because in this teaching, we see sin, S-I-N, as self-induced nonsense. <laughs> because why, if you, it's an archery term that means you miss the bullseye. So what do you do? Just pack up your arrows and go home if you miss the bullseye? No. You take another one out and you aim even better, don't you? Right? Let's learn to release what blocks us from accepting who we really are, our true self. You are worthy. You are loved. And you are enough exactly as you are in this very moment. To live out loud means for us to fully express who we are and who we have come here to be. Who have you come here to be? You're doing it. <laughs> You're doing it. If the infinite was to stand before you and give you a card of what you were supposed to be, it would say, you're doing a great job. Because you're doing what you need to be doing. You know, this month we've explored the practice of cultivating authenticity, which empowers us to step into all the areas of our life and integrity with our real, true, authentic self. Get real. Be real. Who do you think you are? Cultivating authenticity is not about becoming something other than who you are. It involves releasing those patterns of thought, attitudes, and actions that act as barriers to us standing in our personal truth and power. By taking up this practice, we develop the courage to be vulnerable and to stand in that truth. Can you stand in your truth? Can you stand in the places that are sensitive to you and be okay with it? You know, there's no way to talk about authenticity without addressing the elephant in the room. That that feeling of shame or unworthiness that sometimes comes up when we've said something inappropriate at times or done something we wish we hadn't done or been in a situation we wish we wouldn't have gotten ourselves into. You, you know, shame is the universal experience of being human. It's just part of what, what happens sometimes. And we have to be okay with that and own it and maybe learn from it. It's that feeling that, well, you're just not enough. We well, may not be enough in one area, that, but that means you are enough in another area. You just have to find the area that you're enough in. You're always enough. It is a fear of being unloved that convinces us that we can work just a little harder or change ourselves or lose a few pounds or gain a few pounds or fill in the blank. When I do this, I will arrive. Honey, you've already arrived. You're there. 
Take full advantage of it. If we keep these parts hidden, maybe no one will see it. Maybe we're not even being honest with ourselves about it. But if you can't be honest with yourself about what you're walking through, Stop telling yourself little fibs. It's time to be real with yourself. And maybe, just maybe, when you finally become enough, we will then be worthy of love and connection from others. But that's just not how it works. You already are that. Maybe you're just trying to love the wrong people. Maybe you need to love yourself first. See, all love comes from self-love. If we don't love ourselves, we've got nothing to give away. Learning what shame is and what triggers our shame for us will give us the tools to recognize it and move through it with worthiness. Remember the old uh, Saturday Night Live guys? I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> They're in front of Aerosmith going, so oh, not worthy. And they're like, get up, you're worthy. You were never not worthy. You're always worthy. There's no such thing as unworthiness. Shame can be a guide for us to learn the areas that we don't yet love within ourselves and accept ourselves just the way we are. It is in those areas where we are seeking our worth through the approval of others that we get confused. In the science of mind, one of our primary principles is that we are spiritual beings, having a human experience, having a spiritual experience as a human. What came first? There's only one of us here, so we all came together. That we have been made in the image and likeness of God, the thing itself. God, goddess, Christ consciousness, source energy, great spirit, whatever you want to call it. We have been made in the image of its likeness. And we return the favor by creating our God into a human form. Some people call it Jesus the Christ. See, that's the only true son of God. Well, that's not our truth. At least it's not mine. Because I believe every one is the son and daughter of the infinite. How can it be any different? If you take a, a cherry pie and take a slice out of it, what is the slice? It's a cherry pie. You're a slice of cherry pie, my friend. <laughs> see, we need to see God in everything, everywhere. There is not a spot where God is not. <clears throat> the infinite is sitting in your seat. It is closer than hands and feet and breath. God is not limited by form or gender or race or political party or sexual orientation. In the eternal past, spirit made us out of itself, which speaks to our inherent worth as a living breathing, spiritual being. You're a divine demonstration of the awesome power of the ability of the creative universe to express itself. You're the only one that can be you. There will never be another you. There has never been another. You are an intricate piece in this puzzle. Our very life is the life of God. And it is perfect, whole, and complete, just the way we are, and just the way we are not. Just like I say in the benediction. I love that, because sometimes we feel like we're not. Sometimes stuff happens, and we feel like, well, we're not. But we are, even when we feel like we're not. There is nothing lacking within you. When God created us and declared all creation good, there was nothing lacking. When we arrived on this physical plane as newborns, there was nothing missing, and there is nothing lacking or missing now. Only our awareness, our perception is limited by who we believe ourselves to be. 
but we're not lacking. You don't need to be downloaded the 2.0 version. It's already within you. We just have to activate it. It comes from within out, not the other way around. It's not that we don't see. We're just looking at things differently. We only need change our perspective. Look at it differently. The mind that created the challenge can't create the solution in the same mindset that it created it. That's why you need a different perspective. That's why sometimes you need to walk away from your computer and you come back and you're like, oh, I could have had a V8. <laughs> There's the solution. But when we're so mixed up in it, we don't see it. That's what practitioners are for. We only need change our perspective. When a new baby is born into this world of form, it is spent about nine months in the womb. And as long as that baby, as soon as that baby is born, we say, thanks God, we've got it from here. Why do we do that? Why don't we continue in the energy of knowing that God's got our back? God's got our back. Right, Deborah? Yes. That was do a you clap. If the universe has our back. Universe, God, source yeah, energy. God is God. Whatever you want. That's your beliefs. At what point did we lose that connection? At what point did we forget who we were? And we've all forgotten. That's part of our agreement in coming here, is that we will have our minds completely uh, uh, neutralized, and we're going to learn everything over again. Now, some people have a connection that they're born with. Maybe they have... ESP or they're a sensitive and you know some of us have that technique but most of us agreed to the mind eraser experience <laughs> where we we're gonna just grow up and start it all over again how long have you been asleep how many lifetimes is it taking you to get here into this room doesn't matter because you're here now It took me about 15 to 30 years for me to reawaken. And I'm still reawakening. We're always in process. We're never going to get to a summit and go, oh, I did it. I'm at the end of the internet. I'm done. <laughs> There's always more to do. There's an anonymous quote that says, when you know your worth, no one can make you feel worthless. You know, somebody may come up and go, oh, you mean me, 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 say something. And if we buy into it, we're like, oh, no, oh, that hurts. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but if we're standing in our truth, we're like, hey, I wonder what's wrong with them. <laughs> you know, if, if a family member says something like that, it hurts a little bit more, right? Because they know you. But still, they're trying to figure it out, too. We're all trying to figure it out. Our worth is not dependent on what we have done. It is what we know. Who do you know yourself to be? Have we learned anything so far? Yeah. You learned to get yourself here and figure something out. You're on the path to a whole new experience. And you've decided that this teaching can help you do that. Or a teaching like this. I mean, there's a lot of metaphysical teachings. Unity is a wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of independent centers. There's, there's all sorts of teachings out there. But you found yourself here. You know, if I'd, have, if I'd have gone into a unity church first, I probably would have become a unity minister. But I found this. And boy, did I get hooked in. Yeah, watch how many classes you take. All of a sudden, you're going to have a reverend in front of your name, too. <laughs> the only thing that stands between us knowing our worthiness and recognizing our light is a thing of thought of consciousness. Becoming aware of the unconscious thoughts and patterns that we keep embracing keeps us from living our true worthiness. We just have to change our beliefs. And that empowers us to step out of the darkness and into the light. Get out of the shadow. 
I was, when I was writing this, I was like, that song <laughs> came to me. I won't walk in anyone's shadow. You know, don't walk in anybody's shadow. Create your own. Get in the light. Step onto the sunny side of the street. Here's my three talking points. What is standing in the way? Ernest Holmes writes that what stands between us and our good is a thing of thought. It's just a thing of thought. And thoughts that stand in the way of us living out loud are that we doubt our worth. Quit that stinking thinking. Let it go, man. And that sense of unworthiness or shame keeps us from living out loud authentically. It keeps us separate from others and from our true self. You know that feeling when everybody's dancing and you're not, and you want to dance? You know that uncomfortable, like, if I start dancing, everyone will stop and start pointing and looking at me? That's not what happens. Everybody's trying to, there's no, nobody dances any better than other. Everybody's just different. Dance to your own beat, baby. Do it. Exploring shame and talking about it can help us reclaim our power. You know, if we don't address why we feel that way, we may put those feelings in and kind of hold them down, don't we? We're like, I don't want to talk about that. That's the one thing in our family we don't talk about. It's like keeping a beach ball underwater. I've talked about this before. Have you ever tried to keep a beach ball underwater? You can only do it for so long and eventually it pops up somewhere. Don't you know it always pops up? Right? When I'm cursing the avocados for not being ripe. It's like, hey, just let it come, man. It's not a big deal. And while shame is a universal experience, we don't talk about it, which keeps us hiding those parts of our true story. There comes a time when we have to express ourselves completely and let go of that shame and pain. We can hide in fear of others discovering who we really are. Shame is the feeling that we feel when we believe that there is something wrong with us. But that's not the truth. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just having an experience. And you labeling it good or bad makes it so. It is different than feeling badly about our words or actions. It means we feel bad about who we are, that somehow we're flawed. You know, a flaw in a diamond makes it priceless. You are a priceless diamond because you have flaws. Without our flaws, we aren't individuals. That's my flaw, and I know why it's there, and I'm still learning from it. Yay! <laughs> Number two, bringing light to the shadow. Knowing what triggers our shame can help us to navigate those times when we may want to hang our head. Taking an inventory of our triggers helps us to become familiar with them bringing new awareness to them so that we can choose to make other choices. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Rush, 2112, they're my favorite bands. Uh -huh. Snap in the days. Rather than letting shame drive us, we can make a different choice and choose to be enlightened and brave. You know, the second that you go, you know what? I'm not going to go down that road I always go down. The universe sweeps in and goes, how can I serve you? Because that's the truth. You know, sometimes we find shame right out in the open, keeping us hidden. When we withhold love from others because we aren't enough, yet we're not the right size, successful enough, when I become more productive, more kinder, tougher, stronger, weaker, more spiritual, we keep ourselves from expressing fully. That's your growing edge. 
Your challenges are your growing edge. Be okay with that. Be okay with who you truly are. This not enoughness is not the truth. Don't stay there. Yo, I shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall not pitch a tent. I shall not build a condo. I shall not buy the t-shirt. I shall not get the tattoo. I will keep walking. Maybe you want to walk faster. You know, when you're on hot coals, your body knows how to get off. We spent so long running from some of these feelings. What would it feel like if you stopped running and became familiar with them and started loving your challenges instead of saying, God, fill in the blank. You say, God bless it. God bless my challenge. What are you trying to teach me? What, what is the knowledge? You know, what happens when you get the knowledge from a situation? The situation evaporates because you got the message. The, uh, the deliverer of the message disappears when the message has been received. Investigate, understand the root cause and heal them. And we begin to tell a whole new story about ourselves. If we feel ourselves getting triggered, we can then recognize it and begin to question the self-doubt feeling, no longer accepting those past judgments as true about ourselves. And we can begin to use our courage to be vulnerable and begin to live life from a whole new self. See, there's a new self emerging within each one of us all the time. Every morning you wake up on this plane of existence, you've got work to do. You have self-realization to do. And finally, my third point, claim your worthiness. You are not broken. While shame may cause us to question our worth, because those questions are challenging to our worthiness. And they aren't the truth anymore for us. We can be certain that we are worthy. Worthy of what? Worthy of what all human beings need and desire. Love, compassion, belonging, and connection. Isn't that what we want? We want people to love us. We want to love, you know, um, if, if, if you give a, a little girl a dolly, you know, she wants to love it. It's not she's being loved by the doll. She wants to love the doll or a little boy, a G.I. Joe or whatever your thing is, whatever toy as a kid that you loved. There's no judgment in that. It's because you want to love. The toy isn't loving you. It, it may be part of the experience, but it's because you want to love. That's why we're here, to love. Even if you could earn someone's love, it isn't worth the price you would pay by sacrificing your own authenticity. Think about that. Even if you could earn someone's love, it isn't worth the price you would have to pay by sacrificing your own authentic self. Worthiness is not based on what you do. It's based on what you know about yourself. Releasing what is not you allows you to more freely embrace the all of you because you know your value. You know your worth. You know who you are. You are priceless. You are a diamond. Maybe in the rough. <laughs> Maybe you have a flaw. They call those facets. You are multifaceted. So in conclusion, worth is in the eye of the beholder. And accepting your own worth will keep you from seeking it from someone else. And when we know our worth, we are open to expressing and receiving authentically. So let us begin by embracing those things that we have been trying to run away from. 
That is truly why we are here, to live out loud, to discover those sensitive places where we may need to begin to love ourselves. Recovering a consciousness of our wholeness begins to heal us. It's just self-healing. It's what's happening right now so that we may fully express life and all that is ours. And through this self-love, you begin to become attractive. People want to be around your energy because it just feels good to be in your presence. You ever had people in your life that just, they don't even have to say anything. You just have to be around them because they love themselves so much that their love is like a fountain. And if you're in the arena, you're going to get some of them on you. <laughs> and that's what you want. Coming out of the shame closet so we can see it and see ourselves in the light allows us to see shame for what the lie that it is, to take back our power from its attempt to control us and to keep us hidden and step into our essential wholeness as a spiritual being that we have come here to be. So I'd like to leave you with a, a quote uh, from Marianne Williamson, which says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, fabulous, talented? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not in just some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, that's Marianne Williamson. And so it is. It's time for us to follow our teaching and go within. So I invite you to bring to the forefront of your consciousness what you believe the creative energy of life is for you. What do you believe created you? What do you call it? It's your business. You get to decide what that energy looks and feels like. Anchoring into that power aligns us, unifying with the power of creation allows us to move forward in that energy of love. Each one of us is a divine emanation of that power. I may not know what you're walking through right now, but I know that the infinite does. And as we introduce the infinite to our particular experience and invite that power in, moving our conscious awareness from the challenge to the creative energy begins the miraculous energy of thriving, of striving to know your true self. We turn away from what doesn't work, not, not to deny it, just to not give it any more power. Because if energy flows where our attention goes, we want our attention to be on what we want, not on what happened. So let's move into that awareness of miraculous energy. How does your challenge look healed? How does your situation look now that it's behind you? And you can look at it with fresh eyes with that healing energy of love and move on to your next greatest yet to be. 
So in gratitude, we give thanks for that healing that is happening right now. There are truckloads of good happening for you right now. Claim it. Make it yours. And enjoy it to the fullest. In that gratitude, our hearts open to be receptive to the love of the universe. As we let go, we release these words directly into the living, loving law of the mind where it is already transformed into a healing. As we affirm this together by saying, yes, so it is. Amen. Now it's time for our offertory. So I invite you to put your offertory on your heart or your hand on your heart if that's what you're giving today. And we'll recite our Prosperity sharing affirmation, which says, I give this gift freely and joyously known. I can never outgive God. And so it is. spiritual energy these tithes and gifts have been collected they're evidence of our faith our belief and our ability to manifest in this world of form they do good work in the world and they bless the giver and the receiver and allow this grants past center for spiritual living to be open and available for those who are choosing to remember who they are and even those who may not know it yet and for this this community thrives. This Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living thrives with love, abundance, prosperity, and divine right action. And so it is. Well, it's that time. I'll stand up.